Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! I'm Sam, a security officer here and trust me, I've seen my fair share of oddities. But nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, could have prepared me for the chaos that unfolded that day. I was doing my usual rounds near the electronics store, and that's when I first saw her. Let's call her Karen. She was in her mid-40s, was a typical, I want to speak to that manager, haircut. And she was fussing over a phone at the display. Karen was muttering under her press something about the outrageous prices and a daylight droppery. I didn't think much of it at the time, people often vent frustration while shopping, but I kept an eye on her, just in case. A few minutes later I heard the distinct beep of the security alarm. I turned around and saw Karen power walking towards the exit, her purse looking suspiciously bulkier than before. I sprang into action, intercepting her before she could leave. Ma'am, could you please come with me? I asked, trying to keep my tone polite yet firm. Karen stopped in her tracks, her face turning a shade of crimson. How dare you? Do you know who I am? Honestly, I didn't, and it didn't matter. Ma'am, the alarm went off as you were leaving. I need to check your bag. She huffed, rolling her eyes dramatically. Fine, but you'll be hearing from my lawyer. As I began to sift through her bag, I found a brand new phone. Still was a store security tag on it. Before I could say anything, Karen snatched the bag from my hands. That's mine, I bought it. She shrieked. Could you please show me the receipt, ma'am? Karen was flustered. Ah, uh, I threw it away. Yes, in the trash, but it's mine. Just then my walkie-talkie crackled to life. It was a store manager confirming a phone had been stolen. I relayed this information to Karen. And her reaction, well, was unexpected. You're all in this together, trying to frame me. I won't stand for this. I was about to call for backup when Karen did something unbelievable. She bit me. Yes, you're at that right. She bit my arm hard. I yelped in pain, stumbling back. People around us started gathering watching the spectacle. I tried to regain my composure despite the sharp pain in my arm. Ma'am, you need to calm down, I said, trying to de-escalate the situation, but Karen was beyond reason. I'll bite all of you, thieves, liars. And that's when I decided enough was enough. I called the police. Karen was still ranting and raving when they arrived. It took two officers to restrain her and even then, she was kicking and screaming. As they cuffed her, she kept yelling, I'm innocent. This is a conspiracy. The aftermath was a blur though. I gave my statement to the police, got my arm treated, thankfully no serious damage, and the store pressed charges against Karen for shoplifting and assault. Turns out Karen had a history of similar incidents in other stores. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> As for me, I was back on duty the next day. A little sore, but was one heck of a story to tell. It's not every day you get bitten by a shoplifter, but hey, <laughs> that's life at Maplewood Mall for you. Always expect the unexpected. This happened long enough ago and the bully, let's call him Tom, and his family have moved away so I feel safe telling this story. Background. My nephew, let's call him Ethan, went to elementary, primary school about two blocks away from me. Since both of his parents, my sister and brother-in-law worked, we had an arrangement that Ethan would come stay with me after he got out of school until his parents could come pick him up and take him home. As I worked from home, I was able to help Ethan with homework, make snacks and play with him. It was a pretty cozy arrangement, Ethan and I are pretty close and we had lots of fun playing catch in the yard. He's not pitching baseball. Anyways, I also got my butt kicked in video games by him, <laughs> and even just relaxing was a good movie. Overall, life was pretty good, except for one problem. That problem was named Tom, another kid who was across the street from me and was in the same grade as Ethan. Beginning in maybe 4th grade, Tom decided that Ethan would make a good target and would bully him on a walk to my house. It wasn't unusual for Ethan to show up with bruises or tears in his eyes because of the various crap Tom bowled. Ethan never would fully tell us, out of fear slash wanting to protect us. 
What the heck was going on? This became such a problem that Ethan's parents and I complained to the principal and even tried asking our local police department what we should do. Unfortunately, their advice slash response was all the same. Ignore him. We can't do anything because there is no proof slash not happening on school grounds. Make friends with him, kids will be kids and so on. Since the attacks were happening during the walk to my house, I started showing up at Ethan's school to walk him to the nearby baseball field to practice pitching and patting. This worked for a couple of weeks and Tom was never a problem. Probably because he saw the baseball bats I was carrying and I'd look at him with a I will not be afraid to use this on you if you pick up on Ethan around me, glaring in my eyes. Unfortunately, this just led to the bullying happening in school and it was even worse this time around because Ethan needed his auntie to help him. Once again, the school did nothing because they are about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. We even went to Tom's parents, begging them to knock some sense into their son. I won't go too much into that confrontation because we will be here forever. But let's just say that the home environment was probably a good reason for why Tom was picking on Ethan. During this time, Ethan was miserable. He was too afraid to go outside and play because Tom would be there to harass him and he admitted to me later that while he loved me and was happy that I'd walk him home, he wanted to be a big boy and take care of his own problems. To say that Ethan's parents and I were at our wit's end is an understatement. We wanted to help him more than anything but with both Ethan being withdrawn and being out of resources, it was safe to say our hands were tied. That was until one evening in the middle of Ethan's summer vacation between 4th and 5th grade. I was watching the news when I came upon a special on Corvids, Ravens and Crowns. A research team did an experiment on wild crows slash ravens to test their memory. And it turned out that these birds not only had a sharp memory but would attack anyone who did another crow harm. The best part? They never forget. Even after several weeks slash months, they remembered the good slash bad people. I knew we had a local murder, a flock of crows nearby, and decided to put this little tidbit of knowledge to the test. This setup was only two months to go until school started again, and Tom slash his family away on vacation and summer camps, I didn't waste time. I bought a huge bag of bird seed and at the time Ethan would walk home. I would walk the path and drop little handfuls of bird seed in full view of the crows, always remembering to take a different route to get to the school so that way the crows wouldn't get confused. It took maybe a week or so before I'd noticed more crows arriving and they eventually started leaving shiny things. Bottle caps, buttons, discarded gum wrappers and so on for me to find. Once I was sure I had the crows knowing that I was a good guy, I brought Ethan into this. We would walk the path and feed the crows. Soon enough, the crows would start coming out and we'd be friendly with them, giving them names and listening to them gossip while sharing news of our own. We must have looked really weird to the neighbors, but Ethan really enjoyed it and even looked up things about corvids on his own. He learned the shiny stuff the crows were leaving were a form of currency slash thank you presents. Thinking this could be helpful, he started collecting other shiny things for the crows and would leave those in addition to the bird seed. With two weeks to go until school started up again, I began phasing myself out of the afternoon feeding time so eventually it was Ethan who was feeding the crows slash leaving gifts on a walk home. The day before school started I gave Ethan a bag of bird seed in addition to his shiny things and winked at him. The revenge. Sure enough, at the same time Ethan would come home, I heard the crows cawing and what I thought was a little girl screaming. I stepped outside and saw Tom running towards his house. The crows dive bombing him and picking at him. Further down the path, Ethan was laughing so hard at the sight of his bully, running and screaming like a little girl, that he fell to the ground. Tom peeled into his house and locked his door as I walked over to Ethan and helped him up. Of course I had to get the juicy details so I asked what happened. Ethan was walking home spitting the bird seed and leaving the shiny things per usual. But halfway home Tom bounced, making some nasty cracks I won't repeat here before punching Ethan. 
and that's when a crow died bomb Tom. When he tried hitting it away, more and more showed up until the whole murder, who were watching, were ganging up on Tom. I was smiling sweet tears of revenge at our little feathered friends. Especially when I saw the whole murder crowded around Tom's house like he was a set of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. The aftermath. Needless to say, Tom and his family did not have a pleasant experience the remainder of the school year. There was at least one crow in front of his house watching and waiting for him to come out so he could pick and chase him around. And every afternoon the murderer was protecting Ethan on his walk home. Of course, Tom's parents tried to protect their kid by swinging baseball bats and other things to keep the crows away, but we quickly learned that crows talked to each other and soon the whole murder was on them too. They tried to take legal action against Ethan, his parents and me for training the crows to attack Tom, but that got thrown out of the window really quick because they had no proof of us training the birds as they had been gone all of summer break and none of the neighbors wanted to help them. Apparently the murder of crows weren't the only ones Tom's family pissed off. So for the rest of the year Tom had to be driven to and from school so he and his family wouldn't get attacked. When summer started, they moved away, probably to be rid of the murder of crows. Ethan has moved on to middle school, but we still visit the murder and leave shiny things for them. You know, just in case. My granddad used to own a piece of land next to a horse race track. Their land almost surrounded my granddad's except for him having access to a heavily trafficked public road. The racetrack was laid out in such a way that their exercise track was placed north of my granddad's land while the main track with a stadium was placed to the south. Way back when the racetrack was built, they had asked my granddad if they could transport their horses across his land. There was already a maintenance road in place and as they only moved their horses he didn't really mind as they also supported the local village. As a small thank you for this, they allowed him and his guests to watch the races for free. Normally it would cost around $5 in our local currency. Not that much, but it allowed him to take me and all my cousins to watch the horses for free. Anyhow, fast forward a couple of years and my granddad passed away. My mother, who inherited the land, tried to bring her grandchild, my niece, to the racetrack to see the horses just as my granddad used to do. At the counter, she's told that she has to pay for admission. Not really that big of a deal as she thought, but they didn't know that she now owned the land. Afterwards, however, when she arrives to the track to rectify the situation, they tell her that she won't be admission free as it was a one-time deal they had struck with my granddad that now was off. Enter the pity revenge. A few months later, when we had planned to cut down some of the trees, for lumber, my mother told the contractors to accidentally leave one or two logs across the maintenance road. The racetrack now having to load their horses on trolleys as they had to use a busy public road instead of our maintenance one, almost immediately sent an email to my mother apologizing and offering her that same deal as my granddad had received. If we would remove the logs. She only informed them that the one-time deal they had struck with my granddad was off. In the end, after some wrangling, we ended up with a deal where they now have to pay my mother around $400 every month in addition to her and her guests having free admission. This is pretty simple in my opinion. My daughter, I will call her Amber, 28 female, was having a baby. Amber was due next week and asked me to come and stay with her a few days ago until she gave birth. I gladly did. All this time her husband, who's a doctor, worked crazy hours and barely paid Amber any attention. I kept it to myself and thought it would be best if I didn't say anything about it. Two days ago Amber's water broke and I rushed her to the hospital. She gave birth a week earlier than expected and she needed to have an emergency C-section. All this time I was trying to reach her husband and he was not available. He showed up a few hours after the birth and said he was sorry he was in the OR and didn't have his phone with him at the time. I got really mad and I called him irresponsible. 
said it was crazy that he misses his own son's purse and asked him to explain what would have happened if Amber had some kind of a complication during the C-section. He said he couldn't let someone die under his supervision because of this and made it as soon as he could. I still can't believe he obviously doesn't prioritize Amber or their son but my poor daughter thinks otherwise. She has rose-colored glasses on whenever he's around. Anyway, ever since Amber told me I was out of line and needed to apologize to her husband, she said he already felt horrible and it was not his fault. Her husband hasn't said a word to me and by the way he still goes to the hospital and doesn't seem to care that their son is here. Was I really the jerk here? And now some comments on the post. Someone saying, You are the jerk. Your daughter asked you to stay with her, probably knowing her husband was not able to stop taking calls because of his work. Surgeons work brutal hours. Is her husband still in residency? It seems like that he's either in residency or a very junior position. And probably on call all the time. If Amber is feeling like her emotional needs are met, don't create problems where they don't exist. Another commenter adds, You are the jerk. How would you have felt to the surgeon who was doing your daughter's C-section stopped what they were doing to take a call and then just left? The nature of the job he does means that this is just a part of their life and it sounds like your daughter accept that. Yes, it's a shame that the US, I assume you are in the US, doesn't have decent parental leave and that people can't afford to do things like take weeks of leave in case of the baby is born early or to stay and support once the baby is born, but that is a US societal issue, not a behavior issue on the people affected. A third commenter goes with, you are the jerk. He's in an operating room with someone's life in his hands and no phone access. Don't know about you, but I'm rather glad phones aren't allowed than the OR team focus. Each person in the room has a focused, concentrated, difficult troll for many hours at a time. One twitch can mean life or death. Stop being dramatic and appreciate that this was unavoidable. Even outside the operating room, not everyone has the luxury of a job, manager or employer that would let them go at a moment's notice. Many employers don't allow mobile phones or personal calls at work, even in the situations you describe. This was an unfortunate set of timings, but you're acting like a struck-up snarky cow and need to leave it. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.